Start. Ha? Wow. Hi everyone and welcome to the Brownian Notion. This is Google and I am Ananya. Today we have a very special guest, my baby sister Tanya. Hi Tanya. Welcome to the Hi, Brownian everyone. Notion. <laughs> Hello. So what exactly are we talking about today? I was thinking about discussing something that I have wanted to discuss for a very long time. Mm-hmm. It is about uh, almost the elephant in every room these days which is the pandemic. Mm-hmm. But usually we have been focusing on the cost of human life but I feel right. like we need to reflect a little bit about the cost of mental health. Right. And I feel like our guest today <laughs> my sister who was with me during this time be a nice addition to the podcast so that's why she's here oh that's a very good topic i feel because yeah as you said we mostly just talk about the human cost but there is like another pandemic so to say kind of lurking uh, just yeah. ready to happen which is like a mental health pandemic i guess so i wanted to talk about uh, the pandemic almost like a marvel superhero right uh, like the origin story but for me and tania the origin story is a little different okay. so tania do you want to tell the story of what happened when i visited you and i think it was very weird because i saw all of it coming and i know that sounds stupid because uh, now we are almost through so much of it that mm. anybody and everybody can say that we could have predicted it uh, but this was back in december 2019 and didi and i were in my new york city apartment uh, sitting in my room on the 31st of december and i absolutely said we are not going to go out because okay. it's new york city and uh, there's too many people on the 31st and there's a right. there's a disease that's going around in china and i think probably the most cosmopolitan city on this planet so yeah we we definitely should not go out and uh, because nobody was worrying about it back then my sister just shrugged it off and said you know like why do we have to do that why are you scared already and something at the back of my head just told me it's going to be something big i did not mm-hmm. verbalize it more than i did back then but yeah here we are yeah it's like bizarre whenever i think about that day because i think i got back on the first and she just kept talking about it and i'm like chill like this is just no big deal okay and yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. i i have thought about that and i have sort of traced back to the time when i began my schooling in 2001 or 2 it all goes back to that i think we gen z or or the generation that lurks between gen z and millennials this is a generation that was born to the idea of some form of apocalypse i think from the yeah, beginning it's... of the environmental crisis to 9/11 to the idea yeah. of 2012 to 2611 and my personal experience of the nepal earthquake in kolkata uh oh, yeah. floods cyclones and simply the idea of being in new york city drawing back to your marvel mention whenever we think of at least in my head new york city is this apocalyptic place it's beautiful like it is in sex and the city and gossip girl but in marvel movies you always have to save new york city yes that's true that's and true yeah and and it's somehow always the place where the aliens land right it's always yeah. somewhere yes. yeah yes so yeah. the final thing i would add to this is that it was very weird i had made my sister buy my family and i when i was still living in kolkata buy us n95 masks because of the <laughs> pollution that was going on due to delhi and kolkata is also in itself very polluted around yeah, this time yeah. of the year yeah. and i decided to carry those masks to new york mm, there was no reason i new york's uh, pollution index is so low compared yeah. to india yeah 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 that's bizarre <laughs> so yeah this is a real good segue from that but since you talked about uh, being in new york city and i know gogol has been in vienna right yeah um, when this started so how was your experience gogol because things started in europe much earlier than in usa right so december 2019 i was actually in london uh, and nice. i remember 31st night we were having a party and I saw this uh, message pop up which said basically uh, that there is a virus that was found in China 
And I told like some of my friends who were around me and they kind of all shrugged it off. And then, of course, I came back to Vienna in January and I went back to Calcutta. So in January already. Yeah, we're just hearing all these things happening in China and they are sealing off the blocks, but there is really nothing happening in Europe. Uh, So I went back to Calcutta for a month and then I came back in February and that's when uh, people were actually starting to talk about it in, in Vienna, kind of discussing about this virus. And yeah, so there was a lot of you know, reluctance to even accept that this can be a, a certain catastrophic event. So uh, yeah, and then I remember the first cases coming in Vienna, me reading the newspaper every morning. And I think that was like end of February, a friend of mine was visiting me here. She left and then exactly after she left, the first cases started coming in. It was not that the the infection wasn't going around. It was just that we were not testing by then. So I think officially by, reported. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So they started reporting it here. I think end of February or beginning of March, 2020, and that's when I remember vividly waking up and and reading. Okay, first case found in Vienna, and then yeah. So I remember uh, like figuring out with my work people what to do, how to like kind of navigate the whole situation, and yeah, basically the rest you kind of know already. What about you? Where where were you through this whole uh, initial phase? I didn't phase? really react at all because I was in a very small city, a town almost, compared to where you guys were. Like mm-hmm. nothing compared to New York City or Vienna. And I didn't really think about it at all. I was like, okay, whatever. And I even went out with my friends to eat, even though by then I think cases were rising in New York City. This is around right. March 2020, I think. Mm-hmm. But I went out and as soon as I went out, I heard that just a few kilometers away, the first case has been reported and we stopped going out. And that was that. And school closed down in a couple of weeks. But my work didn't close down. Right. That was my first experience. But so I wanted to ask... I'll start with Tanya, that what went through your brain when you realized that, okay, this is real, this shit is real? Um, I think as somebody with uh, panic disorder, I'm very familiar with uh, fight and flight. It came very naturally to me. It finally felt like I was avenged and I had trained for this for years Uh to actually (laughs) listen to my intuition and say, yeah, bro, you're right. I do need to protect myself. I actually do need to run. I remember uh, recalling... What did running feel like? What was running for you, basically? Like, you can't literally run, but like, what? In some cases, you could literally run. So, uh, that's what I was saying when... I remember the first thing that happened to us was that we realized that New York City cannot produce anything on its own. It's a city. So if we go into a curfew, we realize Mm -hmm. that our food supply will go down. Absolutely. So we did not stock up on toilet paper because we're (laughs) Indians. Me and my five other roommates, we stocked up on beans and rice and vegetables that would stay for a really long time. Now, this experience was extremely weird because me and my roommate, we were walking to our nearest Trader Joe's. which is basically a grocery chain um, and we were in our masks and nobody in New York City was wearing masks back then. Um, So we were probably the first people of very few people that were wearing masks uh, in the city and when we entered Trader Joe's, I remember we had to run with our things. That's where the running goes back to. Whenever we were grabbing something, somebody else already had their eye on it. I remember there were beans were not available. Wow. Whatever we could find, we just got. It was a blur, the shopping. Yeah. yeah. Basically, yeah, that's that's what I recall when I think running. Because after that, we even stopped going to grocery stores, right? Everything became yeah. online. Yeah. Yes. yeah, pretty much. And what went through your brain, Deba, when it became like, when shit got real, basically? I think because a lot of my friends were actually also, they were also kind of in denial. So I think I was kind of going back and forth with that. So I was reading... Because this is my reaction to anything is that I I start reading about it. That's what I do. So I started Mm -hmm. reading about it a lot. And then even the WHO back then was kind of giving out very conflicting information. If you remember, initially, they were saying there's no need to wear masks. And Mm -hmm. even though I was like trying to research it properly, I think it kind of made me more confused. And also my friends were kind of reluctant to accept that this is something that's going to change our lives in Europe. Yeah, so I was kind of 
going back and forth in my head. I was at some point also freaking out. But at some point I was like, okay, no, maybe these people know better than I do. And maybe there's no need to worry. So you yes. were you were not panicked is what you're saying. Like you were just taking one day at a time or something. It it depends. At some point, I was panicked because we didn't know what was really happening. And then when the whole situation in, in Italy kind of erupted, uh, yeah. then I got a bit panicked. Yeah, I remember okay. I have a friend who is a doctor in Germany and she actually works with, she was even working with COVID patients and we were talking back and forth every day, kind of ranting about it. So yeah, at that point, we were kind of panicking because... We felt that the authorities here were a bit too slow to react on anything. But other than that, no, my approach to anything is basically to to inform myself as much as I can and then see what I can do about it. I like control about stuff. So if I don't know what is going to happen, it's a bit of an annoying situation for me. What about you? Well, it's hard because I honestly don't remember. I think I was just very worried for Tania because mm. thankfully it was not so bad in India yet. And right. while I was worried about my parents, it was more like if something happens, can I even fly? Because at that time, like you said, there was no mask mandate. I just did not know how I can fly to her and right. protect myself at the same time. Right. Um, and she also used to live with roommates. So it's like, Yes. If she's being careful, that's not enough. The other people also need to be exactly. careful. Exactly. Right. So, I mean, honestly, I was lucky because I don't have a lot of friends here. Um, I wasn't going out that much. I just went to work and came back and I lived alone. So, I was not really worried about myself so much, but it was just like other people. Like, how can I protect them? Right. And I was also reading as much as I could, which was probably not the best idea uh, in hindsight because yes. um, yeah. mental health got really screwed. murky. Yeah, really screwed. Um, and then later what happened is as soon as that became like so-called the new normal, mm-hmm. I felt like this weird feeling of just just listless, I guess, is how mm. I will describe it. Right. Like it was not depression. Right. It was a constant st- state of anxiety. And I just did not know what to do to fix it. I distracted myself with cooking a lot, but that can only help you so far because um, I didn't really have anyone else to feed. Right. And here I could see that my sister is struggling just across the country. Um, I cannot do anything. And yeah, jump in on this, Tanya, because I remember even getting groceries was a whole situation, even when things went online, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, groceries, they're like bare minimum, right? That's what you need to survive. And uh, luckily in New York, everything sort of moves so quickly. Even in the pandemic, although people say that the city has sort of changed the pandemic, uh, sorry, vice versa, the pandemic has, (laughs) yeah, the, the pandemic has changed the city. But I think it is New York's rhythm that kept it going. So immediately people sort of uh, deployed more and more people on the streets to deliver groceries obviously because people also at the same time had lost jobs and disproportionately right. these were people of color that were delivering Being groceries affected, to yeah. us and yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and we were so thankful to them so in terms of that access to groceries was always available but other mm-hmm. things definitely like I remember because I lived with so many roommates even for New York City standards we mm-hmm. had to sort of set boundaries and rules he listen you can't just go out without telling anybody so while that sounds so controlling we realize that that's important you have to notify somebody if you're going out it's very simple and if you are going out are you going to wear a mask i remember one of my roommates just did not believe in it yeah and yeah. Uh, that was a tough one. Every, Sorry, every time... I, I just wanted to say, to be honest, it doesn't feel controlling being an Indian. It just feels normal. But anyway, <laughs> sorry, that's a joke. No, no, but so, so 90% all of my roommates were Indian and yeah. one oh. of them was Mexican. Uh, and uh, okay. he wasn't in the apartment at that point in time. So we had one person less. So in total, we were five of us out of the six. I so see. five of us living in our separate rooms. That was yeah. an experience on its own. Tell us, what did you do over 2020? Like, I know you were there till July and taking classes online, like this whole shift. How did that affect you personally? And it it was extremely interesting because 
and i'm using the word interesting because i've picked it up from my graduate school friends whenever they don't have a meaning or like a right word for anything i use the word interesting so i remember <laughs> first trying to portray it to my family as if nothing was wrong uh, as if they couldn't read the news for themselves and as if i knew i was feeling very protected which i wasn't because i was a student back then i remember they would catch me in the lie when they were on call and they would all they would hear is sirens and in new york city sirens are extremely normal but it just went up to a point where it never stopped we had to sleep right. through that it became a lullaby so <laughs> other than that i think you know new york being new york the fire escape that joined with my room became mm-hmm. my outside my look onto uh. the city and additionally i realized that i had to conform to my generation very deeply what i mean by that is you know because we are younger and we wouldn't at that point in time uh, the variant was such that it would not probably affect us more than most people right and yeah, yeah, yeah. we at the same time are students we had to jump on to the online bandwagon better than other people we cannot complain yeah. about it because we are supposed to be that generation yes. that yeah. knows everything and will immediately be okay with zoom classes so mm-hmm. i definitely felt that pressure i uh, mm-hmm. went on to tiktok i still whenever i heard the songs that went viral at that point in time it brings me back to everything <laughs> oh yeah and 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 additionally dalgona dalgona coffee was something that <laughs> so yeah all of these trends so oh. that's what i mean by conforming to my generation you know it it really really put me in a place where i felt one with the people of my age where we were mm. struggling but it could not be loud because there were so many people struggling more than we were and somehow through all this dalgona coffee and with tiktok it's just like this is what i felt that so- suddenly we are actually in this together like because people used yes. to keep saying this to me all my life and i never really understood how people are together in anything but i felt this was the only time in my life that actually people were together in this and Uh, yeah. through this dalgona and whatever tiktok trends and all of these things i felt kind of connected with you know all these people i think that also kind of helped me so it's uh, speaking of being in this together um i remember seeing in italy people would like sing to each other or play yes. music and i know yes. tania had that too like there were people across the street who were playing music oh, yes. did you have that as well gogol yes there were some people doing it it really depends on the neighborhood my neighborhood didn't really have it so much it was like maybe occasionally but there were certain neighborhoods like the more hipster ones that was kind nice. of doing this regularly i feel yeah. very thankful for my neighborhood compared to that because i remember uh, my neighbors and the term neighbor became very vague back then because anybody that you could see from your window is your neighbor neighbor okay. yeah. though yeah. they are yeah. not in the same apartment complex they probably just on your street what yeah. they did was they made a facebook group put up a huge cardboard sign with the name of the facebook mm. group on their fire escape and said please join it we want to talk so what oh. they wanted to talk about was to have like a drink anything glass of water a pint of beer whiskey on a friday night every week till the cases start going down and so we did that we couldn't communicate much because um, you know how much can you scream across fire escapes <laughs> but yeah. occasionally there were weeks where everybody was present that's and so everybody cute. was just drinking and watching each other that's it yeah that's so nice extremely cute not to dampen um, all that but i remember i was so jealous back then because i cannot see anything from my apartment yeah. i cannot hear a word and this was almost like um, thanksgiving or christmas in usa where everyone is you know back to their families and there's almost not a soul on the streets and i just felt like people keep saying we are all in this together who are these people <laughs> i feel so alone jumping from that and now that we are in 2021 and we have been through this but it is still here the pandemic is still here it refuses to leave us alone and scientists have predicted that this might be the situation till 2024 mm-hmm. um how do you guys feel because and i'm talking about i don't know if you guys have read the new york times article by psychologist adam grant where he coined the term languishing mm-hmm. he said it was just constant feeling of listlessness listlessness oh my god i cannot say it 
um, where you just feel unhappy and you don't feel pumped to do anything. So I'll start with you, Tanya. Like, how has the process been overall? I feel like personally, when I read the article, I realized that I do associate myself with the term, but I don't mm-hmm. find it to be very accessible. Mm-hmm. And I feel as human beings, uh, whatever action we take on daily basis is based mm-hmm. off of some kind of memory or preparation given to us by our caregivers. Right. And with the pandemic, we had no reference point. So we had to build every day based on what was happening for the next hour or the next Mm -hmm. minute or the next COVID case. Yeah. Yeah. So building your life around the next minute is what has been very difficult. And now that we have been talking about 2021, we no longer fortunately need to build our life around the next minute. We can do the next hour or maximum the next week. Yeah. And unfortunately, it is still changing. Yeah. But it will never go back to what we had. So it is just this. Yeah, I don't think it will never go back to what it was because that is also a part of what languishing is. I think personally, Mm. if I had to define it, is is sort of giving up on thinking that that will come back. Hmm. Yeah. What what will come back is a product of what we have created and continue to create on a daily basis. So yeah, yeah, that is languishing for me. Yeah, and also it's like as most scientists have said, and they agree with you, Tanya, that we have a lot more information now. So whatever happens will be based on the back of this information, right? It is not like we are not at the deep end of the pool anymore. We might not be at the shallow end yet, but we are somewhere in the middle. Somewhere in the middle. Yeah. um, So I associated myself with the word flow much more than languishing. And and I think what I really did was, you know, the psychologist came up with this term. I don't remember the name of the person, but it's called revenge bedtime procrastination. Wow. (laughs) <laughs> yes that's fascinating these are like three different words that i know individually the meaning of but i don't know what they mean together <laughs> i think this is actually a chinese term and some psychologists like translated it to english but i might be wrong about that okay <laughs> i related to both languishing and revenge bedtime procrastination So the revenge bedtime procrastination is you know that you have to go to work at like 8 or 9 in the morning, but you cannot sleep Uh, till like 2 or 3 because you're doing things you actually enjoy, like, you know, watching a movie or so it is like you're almost avenging your day job, which you are not having that much fun during and you're doing something you actually enjoy, which may not be productive. And it is almost always during bedtime. Yeah, because so, you yeah. have such less control throughout the day. Because like I said, yeah. you're planning by the exactly. minute. You seek this control when you are going to bed. Because that's when nobody asks anything of you. Right. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. I did mess up my schedule at some point. But I didn't even think if I'm doing it because of revenge. Uh, what bedtime procrastination revenge bedtime procrastination i don't know if i did it for that reason but i did mess up my clock at some point so maybe you did indulge in it a little bit without realizing yes Yes. so just to move on to like lighter things uh from languishing and revenge bedtime procrastination were there any creative things that you guys did since the beginning of 2020 which kind of um helped you I know Tanya already mentioned Dalgona Coffee, but like anything (laughs) of your own. I started learning how to be a curator at a museum online and the museum is located in India. So these things were creative projects that I never thought I would take up. I started painting more and I took up like larger canvases to paint. So yeah, I, I took up those things and I think they kept me sane. Google, did you do anything besides the podcast? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, jokes aside, I think the podcast idea came out of the boredom, yes. But other than that, yeah, I just started cooking more often because I didn't get the time to cook before. So I just got so much mm-hmm. time to cook. I just got so much time to read. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I read around like 27 books last year. I, I don't think I've read like 27 books in three years combined before that. So that and then cooking and then I started sketching a little bit again. And uh, yeah, that's it, I think. Okay. What about you? I was definitely cooking a lot more uh, in the be- during the beginning of the pandemic. And then I lost interest because it was just hard to keep up. Because cooking for me becomes like a 16-person uh, wedding or something <laughs> level. Cooking. I cannot stop at 
uh, or one person cooking or something but off late what has been happening is since i'm alone again and this is just the pandemic seems very unending for me i don't know why i have lost interest in my so called creative pursuits like you know cooking or painting or whatever used to give me joy that has kind of diminished a little bit for me mm-hmm. but yeah the podcast definitely helps i enjoy doing this uh, research for this so yeah. this is something i'm holding on to a little bit you know if you think about it it may be because and i think that is very important to mention you had an in person job the entire time right yeah unlike yeah, anybody true. i know except like nurses and doctors and delivery people right yeah those things didn't change for you and you still have that job and you're continuing to do the same job while the world around you is constantly changing and at the same time the covid threat remains so yeah. you are only feeling changes that you are making in your life so maybe right. that's why you you actually appreciate the podcast so much more right right Yes, what Anya said is right. For me, it has almost been like watching a giant TV, and it is like another world. Like the rest of the world is just another world where things are happening. Right. And my life has not really changed. So yeah, I think we are out of time, but we will move on to our last segment, where we ask our guests for some recommendations, and that can be anything you did over the weekend, to a book you read, or something you watched that. even if it is something you watched like years ago but you think is still good do you have anything for us uh the one thing that i would like to recommend is book which went viral this year it's called my year of rest and relaxation by nice. this author called othessa moshfe and okay. i'll just i'm not going to give you a summary but what i liked about the book is that this person voluntarily goes into quarantine to heal themselves and there is no pandemic in the book but they go into quarantine and they try to sort of because we've been talking about mental health and i think that's a great ending they try to heal their brain by just staying inside and watching the world in a daze and just doing hmm. the bare minimum and okay. that was very interesting to read so i definitely recommend that book to everybody nice okay yeah brilliant recommendation i really like the concept Yeah, and we will definitely link both the New York Times article and uh, book uh, in our okay. show notes for our yes. listeners yes. if they're interested. So thank you so much, Tanya, for joining us. This was really, really fun. Thank you thank so you. much. Thank you. This was cathartic. <laughs> yeah. What was it? Yeah, it was. It was very nice. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, everyone, for listening. We hope you had as much fun as we did. <laughs> You'll find our social media handles in the show notes. Please do follow us on social media. We post a lot of things not right now but at some point hopefully you'll also find our email address do send us emails about feedback or if you have suggestions for any topics we would love to hear from you also we are of course looking for new great ideas uh, for stuff to cover so that would be great yeah see you next week bye ciao no 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 Okay, mm-hmm. too too much energy. Lot less energy. <laughs> Lot less energy. Okay. Yeah.